Hey there, in this video, I want to share some tips when working with images and Webflow. So that way, if you're just starting off with the platform, this will help ease the learning curve a little bit, as these were some of the things that helped me when I was learning Webflow back in 2017, 2018. So I figured I'd share them with the community and help someone else. So in my example right here, I have a about section that I gave it the class of section underscore home dash about. And what I want to do is I want to add an image below this button that says our story. So I'll select my component that I've set up, the home dash about underscore component. And I'll the first thought will be to use the shortcut command or control E and drop in an image below the spacer I have set up. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll use the shortcut command E and add an image. And I can select the image I want to use. And just remember, always disable responsiveness. But I'm not a big fan of directly adding the images like this, uh, because that way you're having individual styles for various images you might have in your project. So instead of adding the image directly below the spacer, I like wrapping the image images I use in a parent div. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in a div using the shortcut command or control E and select the div. And I'm going to nest this image inside this div so it becomes a child element. And then I'll give this div a class of home dash about underscore image wrapper. And then what I could do using this image wrapper is depending on the design or the particulars of the image, I can apply an aspect ratio. So we'll look at this image and we can see that it has an aspect ratio of 1200 by 800. So I can go back to this image wrapper and I can go down to ratio. And I'll go to custom and I'll make it 1200 by 800. And the cool thing about using this aspect ratio is this doesn't necessarily define the width of our image. I can still go and give it a max width of five rem and whenever I use max width, I always like giving a width of 100%. That way, it will always be 100% width up to the max width of 5 rem. And you can see that as I go up, let's say 10 rem, it's going to maintain that 1200 by 800 aspect ratio. So I can continue to size up, and it's always going to keep the aspect ratio. So you won't get any weird cropping or weird sizing with your images and it will always maintain the aspect ratio of your design. So I'll just give this max with 50 rem, or I'll just say 1200 by 16, 75 rem for the sake of this video. So what I like to do then is now that I've set up this image wrapper, I like to select the image element. And like I mentioned, I don't like having any particular sizing classes for my images. What I like to do instead is go to the style selector and select all images. And since 99% of the time, my images are going to take up 100% height and width of the parent and set to fit of cover, I like to set it by default so all my images will have this sizing. So I can scroll down, give it a width of 100%, height of 100%, and give the object fit of cover. That means that by default, as soon as I drop in an image, it's going to have this sizing applied. So it's going to be 100% width, 100% height of my parent, and have an object fit of cover. Now there are some situations where you might not want the object fit of cover, and you might want something like contain. In that case, you can create a utility class. Like I like to create one called image full contain. You can see it's right here. And in that case, it's 100% width, 100% height, but it's set to an object fit of contain. Most of the time when I use this image full contain class, it's for like logos in the nav bar. So that way the branding doesn't have any weird crop when it's in the nav bar. But other than that, most of the time, I like having my images set to cover 100% width, 100% height. Now, another thing I want to bring to your attention is that with this image selected, if I go into my settings, we can see that this image 
is 1200 by 800 and has a file size of 164 KB. I always like to keep my images under 200 KB. 200 KB is like the magic number. And you're probably wondering where I got that image, that file size from. Well, if I was to replace this image with one that was heavier, we can see this one is 269 KB. We get this yellow emergency icon and it tells us that this image file is very large and will make your site load time slower. Try replacing it with a smaller image. So every time you upload a static image that is above 200 KB, you're gonna get this yellow emergency highlight icon. And the way you can fix that is just replace it with a compressed version of your image. Now this is when it relates to static images. Unfortunately, when you add CMS images, there is no yellow emergency icon. So what you can do is when you have a CMS collection, like for example, I have a blog here, you can go to the settings, and when you have an image, you can give it a maximum image size. So that way for future reference or when you pass it on to a client, you can make the maximum image size 200. And in that case, no one can upload an image higher than 200. And it will highlight it with a red box and tell you to upload an image under 200 KB. So there you go. Some tips when working with images in Webflow. Thank you for watching. Hope this helps with your projects. And I'll talk to you next time.